So we're right on time. Thank you, OPN and the other channels that may be mirroring us. We appreciate your uh, support and attendance. We're very fortunate and privileged and honored to have Yorgos Cosmopoulos from Stop Cartel TV in Greece live to have a discussion with us this afternoon. It's late in the evening in Greece, but Dr. Cosmopoulos was very gracious to give us the um, gift of his time and energy, so we're really looking forward to it. Um, I want to thank Grey Dog for facilitating this evening. Uh, as usual, the links that Dr. Cosmopoulos references in the conversation will be put in the chat stream for you to refer to, and we will make all the links available to all the chatters at the end of the show. So thank you, Dr. Cosmopoulos. We appreciate your time okay. and energy, and welcome to OPN. Uh, I must uh, express uh, my thanks uh, to you and all the uh, team of your uh, uh, channels uh, uh, for uh, this presentation uh, tonight. Uh, I must say that uh, we are very interested uh, here in Greece uh, to have uh, our presence and our voices uh, here uh, in uh, other countries outside Greece for the reasons that uh, maybe we'll uh, have the opportunity to uh, expand and explain during our discussion. Uh, that's the purpose and we, we hope we can cover a lot of territory. So I would like to launch right in. If you could give a brief introduction of yourself and tell us about your role with Stop Cartel TV. Uh, my personal uh, role in Stop Cartel TV uh, is um, basically the organizer and uh, due to the fact that uh, uh, there are not uh, so many people around who can handle uh, this sort of function just uh, to uh, uh, cover the part of the productions that have a relationship with the presentations of uh, outside uh, events and also uh, the presentations as far as the daily information is concerned. Um, very good. Um, what is the mission of Stop Cartel TV? Apparently, uh, Stop Cartel TV um, thought, uh, I mean, at Stop Cartel, we thought uh, that uh, taking in consideration that uh, we've got uh, the uh, technology in our side, uh, we should, uh, given the opportunity uh, to the citizens of our country first, uh, to have a, a direct information uh, an information that is coming from the eyes, from the ears, the hearts and the brains of ordinary people like we are, because we are not, uh, uh, we are not uh, professional uh, journalists, because as in any other part of the world here in Greece, to start with, we've uh, got lack of real information. Uh, because uh, the uh, daily information is controlled by the regime that is existing here, as far as is, resisting, uh, is existing in the uh, European Union, as far as uh, is existing in all the world, in your uh, country uh, included as well. Uh, and second, uh, to get our uh, voice to be uh, heard, uh, uh, outside the borders of Greece. So uh, this is our uh, mission as far as uh, Stop Cartel TV is concerned. And uh, uh, apparently we have given priority uh, since the earlier times of our existence uh, to uh, the coverage, to the live coverage of uh, movements, political movements, events that they have been taking place all along uh, here in Greece. 
uh, having in our production uh, uh, archives uh, more than a thousand hours of uh, live, outside live uh, broadcasts, uh, I think that uh, I believe that is a, a, a real record. It's something definitely to be proud of, and it is such good work that you're doing and very inspiring. How long has the channel been on the air, and could you give us a brief history of how it started and where it is now? Uh, Stop Cartel TV. Yes. Um, you've got to be surprised to hear that it's on air already six years. Outstanding. Uh, yeah, we started uh, with the Stop Cartel as a, a antitrust uh, movement uh, in November 2006, and uh, immediately after that, in January 2007, first of January uh, of 2007, we launched our first uh, live broadcast from here, from Greece. So. We, have, we are a good uh, six years on air. Um, now, uh, as far as uh, Stop Cartel and the Trust Movement is concerned, you know, uh, this is a, a big and very painful story. Uh, and uh, I, I believe that uh, to talk only about this, uh, we should have several hours <laughs> of uh, broadcast in order to... Um, present uh, the um, way that uh, Stop Cartel and Stop Cartel TV started. Uh, it's just um, to make a very brief, uh, uh, a very brief uh, uh, comment is that uh, Stop Cartel uh, uh, as an antitrust movement started in November, as I said, of 2006 and it was due to the fact uh, that uh, uh, it was the result of a very painful catastrophe uh, that happened to us due to the fact that uh, one of the big uh, uh, industrial and commercial cartels that they are leading uh, Greece has attacked us at that time, uh, caused uh, an absolute catastrophe and then, uh, due to this fact, uh, uh, we decided uh, to uh, organize this antitrust movement. And just to explain to um, the fellows who are uh, listening to, uh, uh, to us, uh, is that uh, when we're talking about antitrust movement, uh, we mean a movement that is addressing the nucleus of the social and political cell, not only in Greece, not only in Europe, but all over the world, United States included. And what I mean by that? We all uh, uh, used to say uh, that uh, uh, the real uh, administrators of our lives are not the ones that we just uh, watch in the surface surf, uh, in the surface of the scene and I'm referring to politicians uh, politicians according to our analysis are just the tools of a whole system that is leading our lives uh, this system is including the banksters the big industrialists, the big commercialists, who are forming the one element that is residing into inside the center of the nucleus of the social cell. Now, uh, I'm just uh, trying to uh, uh, give this biological, let's say, picture as a matter of fact, uh, also uh, because I'm a medical doctor myself, uh, uh, in order to say that inside the nucleus of the social, economic and political scene in every country and globally, there are three elements. The first 
element are the groups, the several groups that are consisting uh, the uh, economic, let's say, uh, element of the nucleus. The second element is the political, um, the political authority, the politicians. And the third element is ourselves. So inside the social and uh, economic and political nucleus, uh, where we are ourselves, we've got a trigon. The one part is banksters, industrialists, commercialists, who are forming uh, the several groups uh, and those groups of interests, they are the cartels. We all know about them. Mm -hmm. Second, politicians, and third, ourselves, the people. At, uh, at Stop Cartel, we thought that's paramount importance just to focus and address our battle into the center of the social, political, ec and economic scene and try to uh, fight the relationship between the economic factor, the political factor, and obviously uh, the people who are ourselves. This is our philosophy as far as this antitrust movement that we are uh, we are uh, we formed since 2006 here in Greece. And I've got to point out, Mark, that Stop Cartel is the only antitrust movement that's existing in Greece and is existing in European Union. I know that in the United States there is a detrust mu uh, movement. Uh, I'm sure that in one other occasion we will have the chance to talk about uh, that, unless you want to ask me something more. Um, no, that was that was a perfect overview and exactly um, what I wanted to do. Some of our viewers are not as um, up to date on the details of the organization. I think it's important to put it in context so we can, as we have the conversation, they know where your work is coming from. So it makes perfect sense. So since 2006 is a lifetime in digital broadcasting, digital live streaming, I want to speak to um, February this year when the parliament voted in the new austerity measures you and your crew were live streaming from Syntagma Square and we would love for you to describe that night and those events. We all watched it. It was very intense. It put Greece front and center on the map of revolutions and your coverage was so real and so vibrant we were wondering if you could speak to that evening and that experience. Uh, I'm sure that you are referring to the evenings because it was not only one. Yes. Of yes. the 15th of the 15th of June, uh, 2011, and also the evening of the 28th and the 29th of uh, June as well. There were th uh, three really dramatic afternoons, evenings, and nights those days. Uh, we have been in uh, Sintagma Square since uh, in the morning, uh, every day during uh, that period. And uh, having in our shoulders uh, the experience of another battle that was taking uh, during the winter for four months in the city of Keratea, uh, that was at about 80 kilometers away from Athens. Uh, we were uh, going to Sidagma Square, just prepare to leave whatever we uh, experienced later on. It was uh, really a very, um, a very uh, dramatic uh, experience there, and. Um, I, I do feel that uh, people of Greece, uh, during those three days, 
and also uh, apart from other occasions obviously uh, the uh, day of the 12th of February this year they manifested to the outside world that they don't sleep they manifested to the outside world that they are very keen to uh, be uh, involved in a battle against this regime uh, and uh, the big question is uh, why everything looks like have been relaxing uh, this is a, a question and a analysis that if you want we can do it uh, quickly here um, uh, yes it may be good to speak to that yeah thanks eh? sorry Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I talked over you. Um, I think it would be good to speak to that question about the appearance, the appearance of relaxation when the truth is quite different. Well, first of all, I've got to, 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 to explain to the outside world that the Greek society at the moment is feeling a lot of suffering and a lot of pain. Uh, and uh, these uh, feelings and these experiences they started uh, immediately after the imposition of the first in a row memorandum that was imposed uh, uh, almost uh, two years ago in the country before that time the things they have been deteriorating day by day our uh, daily lives they were uh, going you know down to the drain from every point of view and uh, uh, people they uh, went out uh, on the streets just really not only um, uh, be ready and keen to be confronted with the regime but the most important politically is seeking a real political and practical proposition uh, to the uh, problem that uh, our lives uh, are facing now the thing that happened is that uh, during uh, that period uh, although it was a lot of uh, a lot of uh, mobility one and a half million uh, people on the streets of Athens only all those days that I have already mentioned it finally the people all the time they return home having a uh, brief the tear gases, the chemical weapons, be beaten and hit by the rioting police, and then um, uh, going back home uh, at the times that they were not going to the hospitals or to the police stations uh, as an RSTs. So going back home at the end of the day, they were feeling that uh, nothing really was at sea this feeling uh, has uh, progressively developed inside the souls of the millions of the Greek citizens who were and they are still very decisive and very keen to be confronted with this regime a sort of disappointment because they were expecting to participate and to take part in a organized really people's movement that up to uh, recently and up to maybe now is not present and would you would you say that the the Greek people currently are feeling um, a bit of um, discouragement and regathering their emotions and their strength? Greek people, as I said earlier, 
they are um, in a status of despair at the moment. Mm -hmm. And also, they have gone forward from the stage of anger to uh, the stage of internal, the soul decision that something now is got to be done. In Greece, we've got, we've got, uh, I would say, more than a hundred movements, political movements people's movements, who are manifested not only in Athens, but all over the country. The unfortunate thing is that uh, we haven't uh, come to a stage to have a united political expression of this very deep political life will for not only for resistance, but for overthrowing the regime that is, has enslaved our lives. So this is the central political problem here in Greece. Because the political system, the official, I would say within brackets, mm -hmm. uh, political system in Greece has, in actual fact, has fallen in pieces. So uh, don't look because uh, maybe you will ask me how many uh, parties uh, you've got and so on. I will, I will address maybe uh, such a question. But uh, politically, the majority of the pre-existing parties, the parties particularly that have served uh, this regime for decades, they are not an, a, a existing. Look at those two uh, major parties, uh, Nea Demokratia and PASOK. They have been administering this country for almost four decades. Look, the one uh, is got a 20 something, 20% 20 of the votes, and the other one something of uh, uh, not even uh, around 10%. What that means? for parties who were elected all along with majorities of 45%, uh, 50%, 50-something percent, this is a, a, a picture of not political existence for them. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is a political empty space, huge, that is got to be filled at the moment and look what happened to us for example we are part of the of the of the people's movement stop I'm, I'm referring to stop cartel okay just before before the um uh, latest election they came from uh, from the party of syriza at the time the party of syriza was having only the 4.5 percent of the electorate okay that was his last uh, votes uh, during 2009. They came to us and they said to us, we want you to, to get some candidates if you agree with that. So personal decision of, uh, of uh, uh, our people, they decided to participate in the elections. When we are asked why we did that, we said that Syriza is the closest possible relative of us. What I'm trying to say, Stop Cartel and other comrades uh, from many uh, movements, political movements, we have tried even before the crisis starts here in Greece, the last three years, to just unify ourselves. We organized a, 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 an assembly at that time when was nothing in the surface. Everything was quiet in Greece. At that time, we managed 27 movements to be united and sign a political platform of unification 
and further action and I'm pointing out before the actual crisis comes that initiation that agreement was uh, was um, not materialized for reasons that made us to believe that the unification issue has a lot of way to run still to be materialized in Greece. Mm -hmm. um, and we still today, we make in efforts to that respect. But as we used to say, maybe you having the same proverb, proverb in the States, in Greece, too many chiefs, no Indians. Yes, we have the same the same saying and we do have the same problem why which is why we believe it is so important to to watch Greece learn from Greece because I believe Greece is further along on the continuum than the United States are so we can we can learn it is very important that we we work with you and study with you very important to have shows like this exchange information and education so that we all may benefit and help each other. We have the same challenges. Uh, exactly, exactly. And uh, this is the reason, uh, one of the reasons we are also uh, very inclined to be in continuous uh, touch with you people um, although, as you said, that United States uh, people's political movement is in a different stage of what is in Greece. But, uh, and we know that there you are experiencing, as you confirmed just now, similar problems of unity uh, uh, with what we are experiencing here in Greece. Personally, I do believe that there is a way of sorting out this problem of unity. There is a way of forming up a, a unification political platform that can unite the movements and uh, make people to feel that they are expressed all together uh, in a productive way, I mean, we will never agree, ev all of us, on everything. But we've got to get the common points that are expressing our common will. This is not difficult to happen. I, I mean, at least theoretically, we have done that. We have worked on that. Look, as I said to you, 27 movements to be signing such a platform here in Greece. It was not an easy thing. Despite of the final result, doesn't matter. People, they are still ready to come back, you see. And uh, there is a formula, a political formula of action that is permitting in a common manner all together to act and uh, not I mean, many, many, maybe you're having the same problem in Greece, in uh, the United States. Uh, they say, oh, we need a leader. We need somebody to, 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 to go ahead and uh, everything, everyone to follow him. I mean, we have been suffering in our lives from philosophies like this. We have been suffering by the performances of the leaders that we thought that maybe they are the saviors of the lives, of our lives, of our countries, you name it. We've got to, um, uh, to uh, formulate, to form a political, uh, if you want to use uh, the uh, the term a political uh, formula of administration of a movement that is not based on a personal authority of one man but is based 
on a group responsibility leadership that can be done. I've been talking uh, and privately and publicly about the possibility of formation of a political body. For instance, I'm talking about the sizes of Greece of 70, 80 people uh, belongs to all those movements who can be administering the, uh, the, the, the common movement. You know, uh, obviously there are things that uh, we cannot address them in a public uh, communication like the one that we're having tonight. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, I, I'm convinced that uh, if we get aside the human egoism and the human, let's say, tendency to authoritarian models, then we can achieve a lot of things for our lives for, and for our countries. I, I agree. Um, overcome our conditioning to a default of a single leader would be quite valuable. Exactly. Um, I would like to speak a little bit about the, um, the economic issues that Greek faces, and then I would like to speak to a couple of the specific movements. So my, my first question is, in researching and reading, the, um, the group, the Troika, was referenced very often. Um, mm -hmm. you, you yourself just referenced the memorandum with the Troika. Um, could you describe to our viewers what the Troika is? What does it consist of? Yeah. Troika apparently is a political, political and economic body that is consistent by the authority, the political authority expressed by the European Commission, uh, the, the second part of this body is representing the economic interests expressed by the IMF, uh, International Monetary Fund, and we all, more or less, we know what those represented interests are are the um, economic bosses uh, of the planet, banksters, big industrialists, big commercialists, loan sharks, you name the rest of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, also uh, the third part of the Troika uh, that is represented into the so-called Troika is the ECB, the European Central Bank, that is representing again the big economic interests of uh, European Union uh, that are the economic interests uh, of the European banksters, of the European industrialists, the European commercialists and so on. So we are talking about a, mainly by its two-thirds a body that is consisted and expressing the global and European big economic interests and uh, also by its minority part, the third part, the political interests uh, expressed uh, by the puppets posing as leaders and members of the European Commission. Within the Troika itself, those three elements that you spoke to, is there very much Greek representation or is it mostly composed of people from outside the country? As my question being, is there anybody within that Troika that has the best interest of Greece at heart? Uh, unfortunately, we've got to say the truth to the people. No, there is nobody. As I have explained to you, Troika is a political economical body that is expressing absolutely economic and uh, political interests 
residing outside the borders of our country. Okay, and my follow-up question to that is first to make the statement that the austerity measures that have been imposed on the Greek society and the Greek people are a direct result of the decisions enacted by the Troika. How are the Greek people responding to that? I think you, you have, have summed that up, but I want to touch on that again because I want to get to some specific movements. So how are the Greek people responding to the imposition of austerity measures by the Troika? And, and how bad is it for the Greek person, you, on the average Greek person on the ground, the families, your family, your neighbors, how bad is it? Okay, let's, uh, let's uh, answer first the first part of, part of the equation. You know that the memorandum and all these austerity measures, uh, they mean uh, dramatic and very painful sacrifices for the vast majority of the, of the, of the Greek population. Uh, and we can call them uh, very, in a very conservative manner uh, sacrifices uh, as far as uh, the middle uh, class of the Greek society is concerned because as far as the uh, rest of the society uh, we're talking about uh, not sacrifices but uh, about uh, tragedy to give you an idea before uh, I just communicate to you people how the average Greek family uh, is uh, feeling and is facing uh, those austerity measures, I would say that despite of those austerity measures, we've got to remember that uh, if we compare the uh, government debt that it was present in 2008 at the beginning of the uh, worldwide crisis that started from the states, uh, the debt up to now has uh, hit it, the 160% of our GBT. That is representing a 50% increase. So they have imposed all those tragic for our lives austerity measures. And still, the public debt was increased by 50% since 2008. That is giving a clear picture that the whole operation that the loan sharks orchestrated against our country has not succeeded. The, here, we've got to put a... Uh, within uh, uh, brackets, a very big question mark, because we say that is not succeed. We've got to think the opposite way. Maybe the impoverization of uh, Greek society, it was the initial and still is the target uh, of the uh, uh, international loan sharks, uh, their puppets, uh, banksters, uh, industrialists, commercialists. And uh, to that respect, they have succeeded so far. They made us feel, first of all, you know, the average family of Greece is a feeling that has lost its dignity. You know that uh, Greek people, uh, they give uh, much attention during their lives in the element of dignity. Mm -hmm. Now you've got a whole society uh, that is feeling that uh, has lost uh, the dignity that was up to now one of our characteristics. And I've got now to answer 
to the accusations, to the uh, arguments that uh, are uh, advertising Greeks like uh, lazy, Greeks they don't uh, love uh, to work, uh, Greeks they want just to spend their time just with Buzuki, Zorba and dancing and all this uh, bullshit that they talking about and to say that those approaches have nothing to do with the daily life of Greeks over decades. Greeks, they work in very hard. Time-wise, it has been proven statistically, officially by European Union that they work in more than Germans do, time-wise. The time that they spend in uh, working, I mean. And also, nothing was given for granted to Greece, to Greeks. Mm -hmm. The properties that they've got, they work hard to build them or uh, buy them. The average Greek has worked hard to pay the debts that the system has imposed as system in their lives. It's a big story that we can uh, make a whole uh, program in order to uh, uh, reveal all these things. I've got to say that Greeks today in thousands and thousands. Tonight, just before I start, even in the control mass media, they say that there are thousands of families without water and without electricity in their homes. They cannot hide it. I mean, it's obvious everywhere. People living in their flats, in their homes, having no electricity, thousands, hundreds of thousands of families. I'm not exaggerating. This is the reality. That's the numbers that they are revealing. People going every day to the public uh, kitchens in order to get some free food. People who do not have money to go anymore, not to a private doctor, even to a public hospital, because public hospitals, they require money even to allow somebody to get into the outpatient's department. So uh, we're talking about a humanitarian catastrophe, really real. We keep saying now for several months from Stop Cartel TV, and the outside world is going to know that, that in Greece we're facing, we are experiencing a real humanitarian catastrophe that the regime that is controlling the country does not want to be known to the outside world because this is got apart from political and legal consequences including consequences that have to do with the handling of the public debt of the country it was a, a great summary and a the point made, this message needs to be broadcast far and wide. It can't, re re it just cannot remain hidden. Um, your your work helps to achieve that, and we can band together to help to achieve that. the The average person all over the world needs to hear these stories and understand yeah. this truth. Uh, you see, Mark, uh, the thing is that uh, as far, for example, is um, uh, medicines is concerned, when we started campaigning uh, the lack of medicines uh, uh, here in Greece, there have been comrades, uh, for example, from Belgium, who have managed to collect at about 500 kilos of, uh, of uh, medicines. 
and they started uh, they started delivering us to us they 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 made uh, up to now two deliveries to us you know that uh, uh, we have received the uh, the boxes half empty and the comrades from belgium they confirmed to us that uh, the boxes with the medicines they were full what i'm trying to say that we've uh, got a the local regime that is approaching us as enemies is approaching the simple uh, greek citizen as an enemy we've got to realize that and we've got to speak it loudly to the other societies outside the greek borders and uh, one of the reasons stop cartel is existing is trying to spread the word, to offer to the people outside Greece the real situation that is not known to the outside world. We are, we are grateful that you are doing that. Um, I have a question to touch on the situation with the people. Um, can you speak about the school starting with no electricity and is there food being served to the to the children and also yeah. a second question about um, a s social medical clinic that the doctor volunteer doctors have opened yeah sure first of all uh, we've got uh, to know we have published already in our uh, recent uh, uh, publications that uh, now on the 11th of September when the new school season starts here in Greece that uh, thousands of uh, Greek schools uh, they are going to start without having electricity supply the reason is that the budget that has been allocated to the school uh, was not enough to uh, pay last year's bills to the electricity company so the electricity company has uh, uh, cut it, uh, the electricity supplies to the school to the schools also uh, is going to be lack of heat because you know contrary to what the people think uh, Greece is uh, is uh, having um, quite heavy winters Greece is not only summer Greece is not only islands and sun and uh, and uh, all these beautiful pictures uh, the winters uh, of Greece that starting beginning of November and ending end of March they are sometimes and usually very heavy particularly uh, in uh, northern Greece uh, or parts of uh, central and southern Greece that is uh, up to the mountains and so on so schools uh, schools all over the country uh, this year we, they will have problem uh, of heating so that's another problem and uh, above all this we've got to not remember that uh, up to the end of the previous uh, school season uh, we did have thousands of school children fainting every morning just going to the school because they were starving at home and uh, at the time that they were going to school they were just fainting this uh, has been a, a tragic phenomenon uh, that has been published uh, uh, even by the uh, regime's media because as we said earlier on, uh, on uh, some things are so obvious cannot uh, be hidden so as far as uh, schools uh, is concerned this is the situation and uh, uh, I think that we've got to think how the international community can uh, give a hand uh, also to that respect. Um, also a question about the conditions of local hospitals, pharmacies and medical care facilities. Are those also deteriorating from lack of resources? Uh, yeah, they have deteriorated uh, so much uh, and this is uh, proven by the fact that every other day we have in strikes in regional hospitals, doctors, uh, nursing staff, 
they just uh, going every now and then, uh, even during the summer in strikes. The reason being personnel, uh, lack of personnel, because uh, uh, the regime has fired uh, thousands and thousands uh, of people from the hospitals, as uh, it did from other public uh, services. And um, also lack of payment. They don't pay them. There are uh, hospitals that haven't paid their personnel for more than six months. Um, so um, that means that uh, uh, this situation uh, is uh, leading in elimination of the level of the offering medical services. And uh, on top of that, if you consider that uh, due to the uh, lack of incomes, uh, Greek people are unable now to pay for, uh, as I said, uh, for even um, a paramedical uh, uh, examinations uh, done uh, in the hospitals. All this is uh, forming uh, this, uh, not negative, but really for the daily health uh, services of the population, a dramatic situation. Um, what else did you ask me about the medical staff? I don't quite um, the, There was a question regarding a social clinic that volunteer doctors have opened. Yes. All this situation has made uh, volunteer uh, groups of volunteer doctors and other citizens just to uh, form the so-called social medical outpatients we having several here in Athens, also in uh, a lot of other cities of Greece, like uh, Salonika, like Xanthi, like Komotini, like uh, in the island of Crete, Heraklion, uh, Rethymnon. And those uh, so-called social outpatients uh, services, they are uh, run by volunteer doctors and, and nursing staff. And... Uh, as a stop cartel, we supporting them and we participating on them and the medicines that we getting from overseas, uh, in this case from uh, Belgium, have been supplying uh, such uh, um, social uh, medical outpatients. Okay, and so I want to summarize this, this last little bit by saying that there is no no doubt that there is a significant humanitarian crisis in Greece that equals that of third world countries. Um, but it's not getting the attention that it needs and requires and deserves. So it is so important and I challenge all our listeners and viewers to help spread, spread this information out and help shine the light into dark places. Um, from that, I want to step into how the Greek people are rising up. A couple of specific questions about uh, several movements. Um, and I, I'm going to mispronounce this, but I'll try my best. The, the Den Palerno movement? The We Will Not the, Pay movement? Uh, ah, I Do Not Pay movement. Yes, good question. Um, I had the privilege to be one of the initiators of this movement here in Greece. This movement started uh, in 2009 as a, a road toll, uh, tolls uh, movement. In other words, at that uh, stage, uh, we started going, occupying the road uh, tolls and let people passing through without paying the, uh, the ticket that they were obliged to pay to use the road. This was uh, the initiation of the I Do Not Pay movement. Uh, as I said, started uh, around November 2009. And uh, we came uh, into the States uh, when it was so well organized, was organized uh, almost all over uh, Greece, we, and it was functioning in a sort of direct democracy uh, system uh, with assemblies 
uh, functioning uh, with the direct democracy principle. They have been thousands uh, of people registered on the movement and uh, everything, it was quite uh, successful at that stage of time. Uh, it was the stage when uh, the state uh, was unable to control us. As I'm just pointing out to you, this uh, movement was created, initiated and functioned as uh, based on the direct democracy principles. Okay. Now in one stage uh, when uh, the uh, austerity measures started uh, just affecting rapidly the Greek society, we did have the idea, the uh, movement concerning, at that time it was not even the name Dempleirono, I do not pay, mm -hmm. it was the uh, movement against the road uh, uh, tolls, that was the, uh, the name of the movement. So at that stage, we, uh, uh, looking at the situation that was developing, we decided to rename it and uh, call it uh, I Do Not Pay Movement, just including other manifestations of refusal, of social refusal for payment, like taxes, like uh, uh, big electricity bills, uh, like... Uh, increasing uh, bus tickets in other in uh, in the buses in the trains and so on uh, uh, in one stage uh, that was uh, beginning from 2010 unfortunately the movement was split and was split in three parts the one part, it was belongs to some people who were belongs to some existing parties. I don't want to name. The second uh, part, it was, uh, it formed an, uh, an independent group that continued to use uh, the name uh, I Do Not Pay movement. Mm -hmm. And the third group that remained uh, continue also to use uh, the uh, name of Do Not Pay movement, but those three groups, they did not have any relationship between themselves anymore. Before that uh, situation stopped cartel because mainly we have been uh, assisting uh, there in the communication side of the movement, we, and uh, at that time, uh, it was the stage of development of a lot of other movements concerning the Keratea movement, like I have spoken to you in the beginning of our conversation. We considered that we should uh, uh, concentrate in the communication work that we do. And uh, after a while, you know, the split happened and so on. In that split, we never been involved, you know, or been part of whatever it is. Now, I do not pay movement. It's not, uh, it's not um, let's say, a group. It's not one group. It's not the other group. It's not the third group. I do not pay movement. And as the time goes uh, uh, on, is proved that's rather an idea and first it started in a sort of uh, political idea calling the people to not pay but now it's an idea that is representing a reality people in Greece they do not have to pay even if they wanted to pay anything now I'm sure from uh, what uh, I understand that uh, you asked me about uh, the uh, do not pay movement that became a party, a political party. Um, no, not necessarily. I was most specifically interested in the origin, but I did not realize that it had split. And so, so that is a, a good story because it was originally a cohesive movement 
that split into three sections and apparently one of them became a political party? One of the groups uh, became, uh, just before the elections, a political party. Uh, this was not good because, uh, you know, this movement, as I said to you, uh, started as a direct democracy, a direct democratic movement mm -hmm. to work like that. And, and second, uh, you know, a political party and has been proven in the elections. They just taken 33,000 uh, votes in all Greece, you know, 0.39%, mm -hmm. uh, 0.39% of the electorate. I mean, uh, that is not the political power of the message. Correct. Which comes back to your early comment about how all the parties have very small percentage points, so none of them represent the masses. Exactly. Exactly. Um, let's. Um, can you tell us the stories about the steel mill strike, how it was supported and received by the public in general? and how it was responded to by the government? Look, uh, the uh, steel workers uh, strike, it was uh, a great hope for all of us. It was a great hope because uh, we, um, our consideration, it was that it was uh, in the interests of the people's movement to be such a long-standing strike with this social, economic and political means that that strike had. The support uh, that uh, the strike uh, had uh, from all the political movements uh, uh, despite of their orientation was great, I must say. Um, uh, we have been present the whole winter, you know, outside the premises of the uh, factory you, as a stop cartel, even two, three times every night uh, covering live, you know, the events that were taking place there. In one stage, uh, the... Um, force of the strike went down. Uh, it came up a little bit uh, uh, now during uh, spring and uh, the government, I, especially after the elections, because now in Greece, you know, we've got a um, extreme right wing orientated administration and that has been proven and by the way that they handled this strike the way that they send rioting police you know to arrest the people there and uh, stop the strike and so on and so on uh, we have been uh, as uh, active citizens very deeply disappointed with the sudden decision of the union of the strikers to uh, stop the strike at the time that two days earlier we have been with them, demonstrating with them in central Athens and uh, supporting and participating and be part of, the, of their battle. Uh, so uh, for the point of view of the political movement uh, of Greece, it was a real disappointment the way that that strike ended. And we, so from that situation, you were able to learn lessons in order to move forward, though, correct? So not a complete failure. Exactly. We have got uh, a lot of lessons, you know. Uh, we have been years and years on the streets, within the movements, uh, long before 2006 when Stop Cartel started, you know. Mm -hmm. But we have been living through a lot of difficult situations, personally, you know, 
uh, I was um, I'm old enough to say that uh, I experienced from the resistance point uh, of view uh, even the era of dictatorship in Greece mm -hmm. between 1967 and 1974 being part of the young uh, student, medical student that stayed uh, uh, being part of one of the resistance, uh, existing resistance group against the dictatorship at that time. But uh, despite all these uh, years and experiences, uh, we still learning quite a lot every day. Um, you, you caused me to want to ask another question. You just made this statement about being a young student during the period of dictatorship. How does that environment compare to the environment today? Because I know I'm old enough to have, have known that that existed too. I didn't live through it as you have. But you have a unique frame of reference in your situation. How does the comparison of living in a dictatorship regime that was eventually, you know, transcended compared to what we live in now, what the Greek people live in now. Is it similar? Is it different? Good question. First of all, because I have been through all the change at that time, I never believed that uh, uh, the dictatorship, uh, the military dictatorship, has finished uh, in 1974. Mm. The same regime that was uh, existing before the military dictatorship was existing during the military dictatorship and has been transformed in a political, uh, a political form after the dictatorship. Apparently, uh, dear Mark, uh, dear comrades who are watching from all over the world, the regime was uh, the same between uh, before 1967, between 1967 and 1974, when it was the official military dictatorship, and unfortunately, and this is the real truth, after 1974 up to now. So, politically speaking, no difference. Uh, obviously, at the time of the military dictatorship, uh, everything was in exaggeration. The uh, insult of the basic human political rights, uh, uh, particularly the political rights, it was so evident. Uh, but in fact, uh, if you ask me to compare, I would say that no difference at all. Same thing. I suspected that would be the answer when I thought of the question because the same forces are at play. They're just wearing different clothes. Same exactly. forces, different clothes. Um, so we're, we're getting to where we probably need to, to wrap this up, but I want to ask um, a couple of more questions. Um, number one is, can you speak quickly to the role of media in revolutionary movement and how to use it effectively? Stop cartel being a role model for, for those of us who do this to, to pay attention to. Um, let me put it this way. If we are talking about the conventional media, uh, the only way that they could play a role is uh, through a revolutionary process. What I mean by that? The conventional media, as in every other country, in your country as well, they are controlled or by the uh, state, the official state uh, itself, or uh, by uh, uh, business people, big companies, uh, uh, big uh, economic interests. Uh, uh, here in Greece, they are controlled by 
big uh, owners of big uh, constructing companies. They are owned by uh, owners, uh, shipping uh, owners. Uh, in any case, by big commercialists of any sort, uh, uh, some of them, uh, they are even by the owners of uh, Greek refineries as well. So uh, those uh, conventional media to be utilized on the interests, uh, for the interests of the people and uh, for the interests of the of, uh, uh, people's political movement, uh, can be done only uh, within a framework of an uprising. In a case like this, uh, people, uh, if there were plans like that, could occupy some of those television stations, radio stations, and so on, uh, put them under their uh, control, and then... Uh, uh, make them uh, broadcast uh, the message uh, of deliberation of the people. Now, uh, if we are talking about uh, the uh, web media, we as Stop Cartel, uh, we uh, are of the idea that uh, particularly web TV uh, is uh, the future of communication in any case. So uh, already even the conventional, conventional media all over the play, all over the countries, they are using uh, web in order to broadcast uh, through the web their regular programs. That means that the, the technology is here and the future is here. Now, we've got a problem of, uh, let's say, um, advertisement of our existence. So people know about our existence and uh, get the infor prefer to get the information uh, through us instead of uh, sitting uh, in their lounge suite and just watching the box. Is everything all right technically? Yes, yes. We'll continue going. We're getting a little bit of a flip, okay. but we'll find. Now we've got we've got two issues. Number one, we've got all together to find a way of how we making known our existence in as much as possible of the population all over the world. As I said, in order to make the citizens to seek information through these people's channels instead of being obliged to get all the prepared uh, information uh, from uh, the uh, controlled uh, mass media. A second issue is how our programs can be uh, improved. Uh, here at Stop Cartel, for example, uh, uh, we, between 2006, and 2011 July last year, we did have um, a space nearby central Athens that was including a studio where we were able to make broadcasts, round tables, talks, and so on. We have been utilizing the green box technique and so on. You know all about this, I'm sure. And uh, due to the fact of the economic crisis and due to lack of finance, we did have to leave the place because it was not possible to pay rentals and so on. You've got to believe me that since then we have been trying to get somebody to give us a, a small space somewhere in order to reestablish such a proper place where we can use it and make the quality of our presentations uh, better. We cannot get any, 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 and we, uh, believe me, we have been seeking even a, a stock room, a dark stock room 
in another ground space. Mm -hmm. And we cannot get something like that. Anyhow, uh, that means that there is a lot of effort that is got to be made. And we all must manifest solidarity to every aspect of our common goals and to common activities. Uh, what I'm trying to say, we've got to improve the content that uh, as people's media we can produce. So uh, to be quite more attractive of what maybe we are now. Uh, and also, uh, if in some states we will be able to use conventional broadcasters in local regions in order to make people who are unable to communicate through uh, the web, like old people and so on, just to be able to watch us, to get our message. So there are still a, a lot of steps and a lot of effort, to my respect, that is got to be done before the media that we are now using ourselves and yourselves to be utilized in their best abilities for the information of uh, the citizens of our countries. Outstanding. That speaks deeply to my heart because I believe believe that too. And I, I want to point out to the people watching that in spite of losing your space, that you still do your daily program, you're still able to do these interviews, you do find a way, and you do as best as you can with what you have to work with, and it's meaningful exactly. and it's important. Um, and so I want to make sure um, we, we keep honing in on that. Two more questions. One is one that just came to mind and then I'm going to close it with a question that you can summarize with but the the first question is because in the states we we get the information that we get we try to find information from people like you do do the greek people believe that staying as part of the european union is in their best interest or do the Greek people consider regaining their sovereignty from the European Union being a solution? Well, let me let me explain something to uh, to our comrades and the people who are watching uh, this uh, this discussion that we're making. Uh, Greek people have been suffered an extensive uh, and challenging brainwashing as far as the position of uh, the country and their lives within uh, European Union and uh, Eurozone for decades. The local regime has played very well its role uh, just trying to touch and he did it. The deep psychology of Greek, who was for cultural reasons all the time, although our country is located in the lower part of European continent, in the deep east, just next door to Middle East and so on, Greeks built it by the Greek culture, always we felt that we are Europeans. We are not Balkanians, we are not um, Middle Easterners or whatever it is. That was deep inside the social and political DNA of the Greek population. So, taking that in consideration, 
the Greek regime since the uh, 60s, 61 it was the first action that uh, provided, made provision for the entrance of the country in the uh, so at that time called uh, uh, economic, uh, European, uh, uh, economic uh, European community. Uh, so they made such a brainwashing to the Greek uh, population that is in the best interest of the country. Number one, from a national security point of view, they convinced for decades the Greeks that they've got to be part of the economic community, the then European Union. a security, particularly in their eastern borders with the old enemy of uh, Greece, uh, Turkey. Now, uh, this uh, uh, fact has played the first role that psychologically the Greek population has accepted that as a reality. In other words, we've got to be in European Union because European Union is going to protect us from the Turkish. Second, the Greek regime, the local regime, convinced the people that if you enter European, if we enter European Union and Eurozone, then we will obtain forever the economic well-being of the Greek citizen. That was given a second sense of security uh, to, uh, to the citizens here. Mm -hmm. Now, if we look how the things turn to be, number one, from nowhere has been proven that the entrance of uh, uh, Greece in European Union or uh, uh, in the uh, European community has offered anything more for the national security of the country. The same part of our uh, yearly budget uh, spent for, uh, for the army, for uh, military uh, equipments, Every year that was going, this budget was increasing, increasing, increasing. So part of the money that was supposed to be used for the uh, well-being of the Greek people was, has been used for buying airplanes for Germany, uh, tanks for Germany, uh, military equipment of any kind from Germany, from France, from England. United States included as well. So, uh, our uh, uh, participation in European Union and Eurozone, Eurozone from the sec national security point of view has proven, has offered nothing practically into the nation. And second, at the time that uh, uh, the brainwashing was saying to the Greek daily that, look, you're getting into the Eurozone and now you have achieved your prosperity. You will prosper, pros, prosper for, you, for your children, for your grandchildren. And within 10 years, look what the reality is. A, a, a destroyed country. So, so, this has proven that this brainwashing that has brought the political results, making a majority of 65% of the Greek uh, citizens up to beginning of this year to say, no, we want to stay in European Union, now to start changing their minds. And we are sure if now a a real and honest gallop was supposed to take place in Greece, the people who still think 
positively about the country remaining in European Union and Eurozone, they are much, much, much less of what they have been even in recent times. And something else that we've got to remind to everyone, when we uh, signed our entrance uh, in, in 2001 uh, in Eurozone, nobody said to us as, as, as citizens that we suppose now to have those austerity measures that we supposed to, to, to uh, put in stake uh, the national property, even our private properties. Because now is not at stake only the national properties, the public uh, companies and so on. It's at stake its private property of its Greek citizen, simply because if they have put you in deep death, debt, even the property that you own is not going in few weeks from now to be all your own anymore. There is going to be, and already thousands and thousands of properties in Greece, they are at the hands of the banks. Um, so what that means, that... Uh, your public and your private existence and property is at stake, is in danger. So uh, the answer to your question is that now it's doubtful if uh, the majority of Greek people, they want to stay in Euro anymore. Um, in it makes perfect sense because none of the promises of the union have come to pass. And not only have Excellent. they not come to pass, they have extracted wealth from the country of Greece and left everybody and we've in got, you see, And you see, even the, the, the oppositions, uh, the official oppositions expressed by political parties of the left and so on they don't make this fundamental analysis to the people because so we've got to do that we've got to spread it that's because they they have a vested interest in the people not knowing <laughs> it's crooked final question and you can summarize the conversation what solutions do you see to fix the current system so that it works or, or to build a new system so that it works for the Greek people? Look, this system is not only rotten, like uh, we used to say here in Greece, is dead. And I'm not talking only about the political system. I'm talking about the combination of political and economic system that's existing in, in this country, and that is uh, the equivalent of what is existing everywhere. Now, what we do feel that is got to, to be a, a, a solution. A solution uh, could be, as we said, the unification of uh, the political movements here in Greece, in order to be unified and, uh, and unitedly expressed uh, by maybe a representative uh, group uh, of, uh, of people belongs to all the movements who are going to be expressing the, uh, the points uh, that uh, are um, uh, let's say, are the common points for everyone. Now, um, I'm not sure if the things are so matured at the moment, so such a thing to be achieved. Maybe um, the best is all of us to be prepared for something like that, 
because maybe the developments uh, in Greece over the next uh, several months, they're going to be so rapid that within the framework of the uh, rapid uh, deterioration, uh, such initiations uh, will have some ground uh, to uh, survive. In actual fact, practically, we do feel that number one, uh, Greece has got a debt that uh, cannot be paid. Let's be honest. Everyone knows. All the analysts, an analysts know about it. European Union uh, at the moment uh, is uh, just uh, gaining time. Uh, I'm talking about now the way that we as uh, Greek people should approach uh, the whole situation. Uh, we uh, have proposed uh, already a um, omit of the, pay of the payments of the uh, foreign uh, debt. For as much time as we need, number one, to see what part of that debt, because this is another problem, what part of that debt is legal and what not. There are parts of, this, of that debt that has been paid several times already by the Greek state, seven to eight times. Anyhow, we have proposed to be an a international committee uh, to be employed and uh, just investigate which part of the uh, Greek debt is legal and what's not legal. At the same time, uh, and before we have uh, the answer on that, uh, we just stop paying the debt. Second, uh, we just uh, uh, proposing the existence of a term of the so-called development. We still stay within the existing economic system. And we say, okay, we've got now a recession of uh, 7%. Uh, as long as the recession is negative, um, the uh, omission of the payments of the uh, foreign debt is going to continue and will be repeated. Uh, when the uh, development figures show positive, uh, positive uh, tendency. Am I, am I understandable? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So this is the second thing. During this time that according to our estimations could be between three and five years, we start the so-called restructuring of the Greek economy. I point out to you, we're still remaining in the same economic system. What do we mean by that? We restarting our agriculture uh, industry that was destroyed by the European Union. How many of Americans know about it? We uh, restarting our uh, stock industry, uh, I mean, sheep, uh, beef, and so on, right. that was also destroyed by the regulations and regulators of the European community. Third, we start, we restarting the small and medium size industry that was also destroyed by the same factor the European community and then European Union and Eurozone and so on. Question, where are you going to get the funds necessary to do this restructure, restructuring and restarting of your economy? Answer, number one, from saving from the interests that we supposed to pay to the loan sharks during those three to five years of omission of the payments. Second, there are uh, sources from other countries, apart from European Union, I don't wish to mention now, that have been offering to the Greek state since 2009 the opportunity to finance 
the whole public Greek uh, debt. And due to the fact that the government of the regime has signed the first memorandum that, that was prohibiting the Greek state of, lend to, of borrowing money from other sources apart from ECB, European Union, and IMF. How many Americans know about that? I would think none. So, <laughs> Americans and Europeans, they've got to know that the first memorandum that the Greek state has signed with IMF and the Troika is prohibiting, and the second as well, all the memorandums, both of them, is prohibiting the Greek state of borrowing money from other sources apart from them. This is illegal according to the international law. And the uh, government of the regime, those traitors that are residing in Athens, they have signed this criminal term. So we've got options to do it. We've got options that the European people they've got to know. We've got options that the American people they've got to know. The only thing that we need here is the manifestation of the political will of the Greek people to go ahead towards this direction. I think this is the most important point according to us. And uh, we've got to work very hard on that direction because according to our thinking and our analysis, this is the only viable direction. What will happen to, 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 to the Greek uh, public debt after the said period of time the legal one, the legal one is got to be repaid in a long-term repayments program that obviously is got to be much, much easier for the Greek citizens. And in view of the fact that already the Greek economy will be already on the track and be developing and in terms of producing deficits, deficits to be producing uh, surpluses. Uh, this is the plan that we have in our mind and the plan that we wish to be materialized for our lives and for our country as soon as possible. Otherwise, uh, the immediate future the, and the long-term future for our lives and our country is going to be not dark, but really a catastrophe. Well, we wish you and the Greek people success. I think you have a, a great vision. I do want to point out in closing that Greece was the birthplace of the democratic process. It's a tragedy to watch that process having been corrupted over the history, but it's inspiring to watch the Greek people rising up to take that back over and set an example for us all. So we admire and respect you for doing that. I also want to thank you for being here tonight. We went, I'm sorry, we went long. <laughs> But it was an Thanks, engaging, uh, I appreciate your investment of time and energy. It was so en engaging and educational. We would love to invite you on again at some point uh, to follow up on some of this. Uh, we also thanking uh, all of you, Mark, uh, you personally, uh, Linda, and all the other people uh, belongs to the production team uh, of your uh, uh, information uh, channel. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity that you have given to us to present uh, the situation in Greece and we will be uh, very happy uh, to have uh, more opportunities uh, to discuss uh, issues uh, of common interests. 
Very well. Well, I'll, I'll let you go. There's much work to be done. And okay. we really appreciate it. I wish you well, and I hope you have a good evening. Thank you. Uh, I just uh, send uh, our uh, love, our solidarity, and the power that may be coming out of our hearts to all of you. Good night to everyone. Good night.